No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. I have my own social media marketing agency here in the Netherlands where I'm currently based called Brampaneer and I also have my own education business where I teach you guys on how to do the same. So how to get your first clients, how to start your own agency, how to build it up, automate it, scale it so that you too can live life on your own. Tims and in this video I want to basically discuss the sales process so how do you actually pitch your services to your potential social media marketing clients so that you can actually get them on as you know paying customers or paying clients for your agency and I've done a lot of videos on this in the past you know if you scroll down on my YouTube channel you can see tons and tons of videos on the four pillars of social media marketing I've got a few videos on like the project development side of things how to get results but the majority of my videos are actually on outreach and sales so how to reach out to these potential clients and then when you reached out and they've replied to you and you know they want to get on a call with you you know how you can actually then uh, pitch your services and close uh, the deals now there's a few things i want to mention the first thing is if the client is not a right fit it's not ethical or anything like that to still pitch your services and the same goes for the retainer you know if you've got a smaller client then it will be you know impossible and again you know morally unethical to actually pitch your service at a high retainer and this is like a common misconception i think you know because a lot of people will type in how to start their own SMA agency or anything like that on, uh, on on youtube you know they'll google how to earn money online they will come across um you know a few of the, the the gurus in the industry and you know everyone will say oh you need to be uh charging at least a thousand a month two thousand a month and if you can't do that if you can't charge two thousand a month then you don't know what you're worth and stuff like that and there's there's a bit of a dilemma here in my opinion Yes, you know, social media marketing is something that is a high income skill, meaning that if you are good at media buying, if you're good at Facebook ads, if you can get results for clients or if you can just get results with uh, paid traffic in general, then that is something that can earn you a lot of money. And by offering that as a service, you can also charge a lot for it because you're, you know, if you're good at it, then you can actually earn that, that company or that client more money than they have invested into your retainer as well as into the ads. So quick example, if let's say your retainer is a thousand they put another thousand into ads which means they invest two thousand and they get ten thousand back they've got a return on investment they are happy and you know that is why you can actually charge a thousand for something that might only cost you you know maybe half an hour to an hour each day so you know that is basically the equivalent of half someone's full-time income uh with you know just an hour a day which you know is uh, just under 30 hours or you know 30 hours a month which is you know relatively small and then you can take on more clients you know if you can get results for client one you can get more clients and you know that is how you can basically build out the agency and then eventually you become the owner and you have other people doing it on your behalf but anyway you know i digress that is not what this video is about but in terms of the sales process so you've reached out to this potential client and you know you've now got this client on the call what do you actually do now again i'm not going to go into the script or anything like that because that is not what um, i want to discuss during this call i basically want to discuss the method in which you close these clients and when i mean close i do not mean that in a negative way you, you're not scamming these people you're not tricking these people into paying you for something that you are then going to outsource to someone in a third world country that is not the case close basically means that you've come together and you've created a win-win situation in which the client is happy because he's paying you uh, something that he thinks is worth the amount that he's paying you and he's getting a good result you know in return for that and you know you are basically offering your expertise and your services including your time because in my opinion your time is very valuable as well in exchange for a retainer that you are then happy with that is a win-win situation and that is what we aim to create and then if we can create that win-win situation and we've agreed upon a deal then that is a closed deal and that's what i mean by close so when you hear that someone's closed the deal or closed the client or anything like that that is not something negative okay that is not a negative thing it is something that like i said is a win-win situation for all parties involved and in order to know whether it is a win-win situation or not you need to know a lot about the business and that is where a lot of agency owners go wrong on the call they immediately start pitching the services explaining about what they do explaining about social media marketing where you don't actually know what the client is about and what the client knows and what the client wants it's the same 
as if you would go to a doctor's and immediately before you even sit down and explain what your symptoms are, the doctor prescribes some kind of uh, medicine or a tablet, you know, without even uh, listening to, you know, the patient, then surely when, as a patient, you must think, oh, hang on a minute, you didn't even listen to a word I said. I haven't even said anything. All I did was wait in that waiting room. I'm here now with a call and you've already prescribed some kind of medicine. That is not the way these calls go, okay? So when you are on these calls with these potential clients, you ask them questions, you ask, you know, what their symptoms are, and you also ask what the underlying feelings are of the client because at the end of the day yes you know it is a business to business transaction but you are also in the relationship business as a, you know whereas you need to basically win over that client emotionally as well you need to make that client uh, see that you understand what their pain points are so quick example when you are speaking to the client ask them how their business is doing what the, you know, again, what I usually do is I set an agenda prior to the call. So I mention, okay, listen, um, you know, obviously there's a bit of chit chat at the start of the call. And then uh, what I basically say is, listen, you know, the way these calls are structured is I'm going to ask you some questions about your business. We're going to dive into the numbers. And the reason why I say we're diving into the numbers is so that the client can then mentally prepare for a question about his revenue, about his profits, about his profit margins, etc. OK, as opposed to just getting there and saying, how much do you make a month? Right. Like that's not what we're going to do. So we're mentally preparing the client by saying we're going to dive into the numbers very soon. And then uh, from there, I say, you know, and if I think that I can help you, then I'll explain what I do. Does that sound fair enough? And, you know, obviously, though, because of the way I frame that question, does that sound fair enough? They say, yeah, yeah, go on, do your thing. And um, another way of framing this, which is uh, something that um, Ryan Brown, which is a friend of mine who is basically completely into sales, um, he structures the call but what he says is um he says listen you know you're probably used to a lot of pitches and things like that but what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to shut up and i'm going to let you do the talking and the way he frames it is as a joke right but they understand that okay he's going to ask questions he's not going to be pitching this service he wants to know more about in my business first and it immediately puts this client at ease and the client then realizes okay i'm going to explain things first just like the patient to his doctor and then only then is is this uh, business owner this agency owner going to prescribe a solution and that is how we do these calls so you ask questions about their business you ask Again, you know, you ask about the numbers. How much are they currently making? What is their current situation currently like? You know, what are they currently doing in terms of uh, sales? What are they currently doing to get those sales? What does their marketing strategy currently look like? Um, how many sales are they getting? How many people are in their team? What is what are their current revenue margins? Uh, what is their profit margin? Their profit percentage? Profit percentage per sale? If it's e-commerce, you know, what is their return on ad spend need to be? So, what is their profit margin per um, product? And then, what you know, you can work out what their return on ad spend needs to be. And more importantly, because you want to build a relationship up, you want to know how it feels to them. So, if they say, okay, we're currently stuck at I don't know five k a month. And you know you, they are struggling to get more sales. They've hit this glass ceiling. Ask them, okay, so how does that make you feel? You know, are, are, does this is this something that concerns you? Are you stressed out about it, etc.? Because if you can really get you know d drill down those pain points and really dig deep into the client's subconscious, you can connect with this person on a much deeper level, and that person will see that you're actually willing to go the extra mile. But also, you create the I don't want to say perception because that sounds like you're trying to perceive this person, but you basically make the clients see that you understand them on a deeper level and you know their business on a deeper level because you know not only what they're currently doing with their business, but how the owner feels about it. And then from there, you can take them on an emotional journey to that um, you know, basically desired situation, you know, so you, you currently know, okay, they're stuck at 10K, they've hit this glass ceiling, the owner is stressed out about it. Why? Because he's uh, outsourced this to another party in the past and they haven't done a, a good job. And, you know, he's had to fire an employee that he was currently very close with. He thought he was part of the team because he was there from day one and he's had to let him go because he wasn't as enthusiastic as he once was, etc. And then once they are there, you can take them up you can say, okay, well, let's paint a picture of what the future is going to look like. Where do you want to go with this business? What is it actually that you want to achieve within the next 12 months, within the next 24 months? And 
you know, how are you going to do that? What do you want your business to look like in 24 months time? And then if you think you can actually help them with that, so let's say they say, okay, I wanna go from 10K to 50K a month and I want to use paid traffic for this, well, then you can reply and say, well, listen, I can definitely help you with that. Do you mind if I explain some more about my business? Now, the way we've currently structured uh, our calls and which has you know been very effective for us is by splitting the calls up. So yes, you know, a lot of the gurus say you need the one call close and one call is all you need and stuff like that. And yes, you know, it is true in some situations you can actually get everything done uh, within the one call. And you know, that is if the client sees the value in it, if the client is very entrepreneurial and likes to take risks, then that is definitely, you know, a good way of doing it because you don't necessarily need the two calls. However, the way we now currently do it is we say, listen, you know, in order for us to get a good insight into the business and to you know genuinely see if we can actually help you, um, what we'd like to now propose is that you give us analyst access to your ad account, analyst access to your business manager, and this will allow us to look at the data that you've currently uh, you know, basically built up and you've currently generated. And then from there we can see what needs to be done in order to achieve the goal that you just mentioned. Now if you can't, if we can't achieve this goal, or if we don't feel confident that we can do a good job for you, then we'll hold up our hands and say, "Listen, uh, this project is either too big, or this project is beyond our scope of, you know, interest, etc." Um, so, you know, it wouldn't feel right for us to take on this job. But if we do actually think we can help you and we are confident in that, then what I'll do is I'll map out how we're going to do that, and then, you know, if this all sounds good to you, then we can move forward from there. Does that sound fair enough? And again you're basically admitting to the clients or you're basically creating the perception with that client that if you can't do it, you're not going to pitch. If you can do it, you are going to pitch. And again, this puts the client, this puts the client at ease because the client knows, okay, this guy is only going to pitch me on a service if he's confident that he can get me the result that I just mentioned, okay? So you're playing into the desired situation that they have created for themselves and also explained to you. So the client, you're not saying, oh, we're going to scale this to the moon. The client said, you know, I want to get to 10K. And then you can say, well, listen, if you want to get to 10K, you need to do this, this, and this, okay? So you get analyst access and you need to get analyst access on the call. Why? Because as soon as the call is over, then you ha you, 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 you've lost them basically, right? Like there's, there's no way of putting sort of pressure under the client to actually give you access. You can't explain how to do it, etc. So on the call, you get analyst access. So how do you get analyst access? Because I've got this question before in the past. I, to be fair, you can just Google it. Like it, it is that simple. But for those of you that don't understand how Google works, or have never heard of Google before, what you do is you go into business settings. So you get the client to go into business settings. You go to people or partners, depending on how you do it. If you go to partners, they fill out your, the, your partner ID in the partner section and they give you analyst access or advertiser access, depending on how Facebook call it nowadays, um, or people. So, you know, go to people, they fill out the email address that you um, use for your personal profile. And again, they add that as an analyst. Then you have access to the ad account, but you can't make changes. You can only look at the data. Then you schedule a call for 24 to 48 hours later. So not 72, not any later than that, uh, because the longer you leave it, the more likely you are to lose the clients. I sometimes do 72 hours, but I know I can sort of gauge when the client is ready for it or not, etc. But try and get that call as soon as possible after that initial call. Then what you do is you go back, you look at the data, you actually do look at the data, you know, you look at, okay, what needs to be done for this client? And then from there, you get them on a second call and you explain exactly what you're going to do. And that is when you pitch your service. And you'll notice that you'll close much more deals because of it. Not only because your pitch is better or anything like that, because the client knows that you've done your homework and you've done your due diligence and the client knows that you've actually looked into the metrics and that you are confident that you can get results for these clients, okay? So that is just what I wanted to basically explain to you guys in today's video. Hope you got something out of this. Leave a comment down below if you liked these kind of videos and if I need to do more sales videos because like I said, a lot of my videos are about outreach. Um, so if you like this, enjoyed this, then definitely uh, leave me a comment down below and please leave this video a thumbs up as well because it really does help this channel grow. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.